Hi, my name is Peter Jacobson. I'm here to tell you that optimum performance is neither a mystery nor unavailable for all of us. In the next eight minutes, you'll see highlights from golf and the intelligence of play. The participants are tour professionals, coaches, developmental experts, and researchers. Listen while these golfers and experts share the difference that makes the difference. You'll be surprised at how simple it can be to make a change in your own game and make a critical difference for future generations. That's the real secret is the love of the game and wanting to be the best you can be. If you love it, you'll always beat the person that wants it for power and glory and money. I learned to find a peace on the golf course at a young age and, and, and I think that's what has helped me to do as well as I have because I, I don't let things bother me out there because my dad always said it's only a game and you want to enjoy it. Nurturing uh, children and allowing them to access the parts of the brain that we haven't been able to uh, access is what this whole thing is about because if we can do that, the possibilities are endless. Our higher self, our greater self, is like this giant that's chained, you know? And we're all like the Lilliputians who have chained the Gulliver in us down. And in sport, Gulliver gets loose for a few minutes. You look onto that clear channel energy, you become energized, your brain be is alert, your body feels strong, your intuitions are there, you have clear thinking. Real learning takes place by what Maria Montessori would call the absorbent mind of the child, simply absorbing their universe, absorbing it, becoming it, and they do this through play. It's a deep, involuntary, constant, irreversible drive to play. Deep, absorbent, genuine play and deep, absorbent learning are one and the same. When the human brain is safe and open, it's a learning machine of such magnitude that it's incomprehensible by our intellect. In the play state, potentials are building at a phenomenal rate. Even though these potentials may not mature for years, even many years after the foundations are laid deep in our imagination. Yes! Saturday! Uh... Ooh, that hurts. Next time you see a turpro miss one of those and look at his putter like a kid, a six year old made with a baseball bat. It's out of here. Home run, thank you, yeah. See, you're allowed to do it. Now in golf, you're allowed to do the same thing. Call it a strut. Yes, I love hitting it in the fairway. Yes, yeah. I had a good job, I had a good job. Ashley Montague's definition of health in growing young is the ability to work, the ability to love, the ability to play, and the ability to think soundly. And I think what we are good at doing is one of those. I think we know how to work. But I think we've lost the ability to play, the ability to love, and the ability to think soundly. Because you can't think soundly if you lose your sense of play, your creative prowess, is zapped. You know, we can live in the Arctic, we can live in the tropics, we can live solo, we can live in groups, we can have a harem, we can be monogamous. There are tremendous variations, but at the core of our variation is our playful nature. So games, play, entertainment, those are the things that, that we call play. The problem is that very early on when those play activities also become encompassed by the cultural idea of competition, there you go again. I mean, the play becomes the same activity as going to law school. So long as we remember when we use the word play, we're talking about nature's means for learning. Unconditional acceptance, regardless of the score, is the greatest gift we can give ourselves and to our children. We call it the zone. That magical state when doing our best flows like a summer breeze. In the zone, what will they think of me simply doesn't exist. It was a Lewis Harris poll that showed that 50% of American kids experienced their first major failure in life as a sports failure. You know, when you can't climb the ropes, that's a public event. 
and that can humiliate you for the rest of your life. There's just a lot of pressure that are put on these kids, either by their own peers or, or by the coaches. And so I think that it's a real scary thing for them. Um, I know my little girl at seven years old and six years old playing some team sports almost didn't want to go because she didn't want to be embarrassed if she didn't hit the ball or if she didn't catch the ball. The thing is people get uptight because they are afraid of failing, they're afraid of being criticized for not coming through, they're afraid of what folks are going to say if they miss a three-foot putt in the last hole to lose. As we start to perceive the environment as being hostile, less than safe, less than loving, then the system will automatically, to, to protect its survival, that's what it's doing, will start to shift into more protection. The more chronic that belief system, the more chronic the protection. The more chronic the protection, the less growth. I played in over 300 golf tournaments by the time I was 21. I thought my, uh, the, uh, the love and the way I would, uh, the love that I would receive was contingent somehow on what I shot. And my character and my score were related. And I've given 41,000 golf lessons, and not one person in all those years had ever had that completely separated. I got on the Pro Tour, and I didn't succeed right away. And my image, my self-image got lower and lower, and it, my game was getting worse and worse, too, because of it. And as soon as I raised the self-image and kind of took the importance of golf and put it in its place, um, things just got a lot better. <laughs> Stick, off the stick. Hit it again. I'm the goalkeeper. Oh, he gets it in on me. <laughs> Race after the ball, we're going to hit it. So you got to keep moving the whole time. This is kind of like a miniature Happy Gilmore. Yeah! What are you not going to do good? That's awesome. Yeah! It was never anything negative. In my upbringing, it was always champ, nice going champ. and. I hit it bad, let's see what you can do on the next one. It was never dwelling on the negative, it was always, always dwelling on the positive. Always positive. There's no affirmation stronger than a father's affirmation that you are going to succeed. Um, everything was positive, and if there was something bad that happened, they'd find something good to say about it. Um, and I just think a lot of parents just don't do that, because like I said, you, the parents are their hero. My dad was great at teaching me to learn from my mistakes and pick out the good out of any round, no matter what it was. If I was 10 years old and I shot 95, he'd say, but on number four, you hit two beautiful shots, and on number 16, you hit two beautiful shots. And if we can just get you to do that a couple more times around, all the way up to when you know, I was winning tournaments. We can optimize learning and performance by bringing our behavior as parents and coaches in line with the biology of the human brain, mind and body. And it's much more a matter of getting out of the way than it is of introducing more stuff to do. How? By always treating ourselves and our children exactly as we would a best and most trusted friend. The teacher can stay out of the way, keep out of the way. Uh, I, think that's a, uh, I think that's maybe the best thing you can do and just allow him to do what he's going to do. And, and once in a while you're there. It's, it's really to help the players to, to sort and differentiate between who they are and what they do, that no matter if they play the very best or the, the worst, they are still okay as human beings. To me, the, the challenge for any coach is to help kids, adults, see through, parents, see through, you could say, the invented meanings that have been attributed to winning and losing. But the key is not to lose that, that fun, that light, that happiness, that joy of your life in whatever the activity is. And a good coach and a good parent infuses that experience into every aspect of their child's life. And as an example, it has to be in their life. So a good coach and a good parent has to have and be a shining example of happiness and fun. Golf and the Intelligence of Play is a 48-minute video package with a 44-page booklet, which serves as a guide for interaction and coaching for every instructor, coach, and parent in North America and beyond. The athletic community has an audience of over 200 million parents, coaches, and youth, two-thirds of our country. The fact that the simple principles at the very foundations of the greatest athletes go far beyond athletics 
is reason enough to share in this project. Of the many personal and social challenges our children face, you will not find a more effective resolution than the simplicity found here. Your donation to Athletics and the Intelligence of Play Foundation, a 501c3 corporation, will enhance the opportunity to provide the package to every golfing household in America and replicate the effort in every major sport.